What's up? What's up? What's up, everybody? We are back. We are back. We are back. This is your boy Q, the content guy, and we are back with a brand new show, Love and Marriage DC. Yes, my home, the DMV, Love and Marriage DC. This show is executive produced and created by the one and only self-proclaimed king of reality TV, Mr. Carlos King. And I must say, um, I, I have I have not watched Love and Huntsville, Love and Marriage Huntsville, but I heard nothing but good things about it. But I'm more interested in DC because I'm I'm from here. I know so many people on the cast, so um, you know, I'm more interested in this show. And I will say that this is a it was a cool episode. Um, you know, for it to be a season pre- series premiere, it was a cool episode. You can definitely tell kind of who was kind of nervous for the camera still and who was like a pro um so of course the show opens up with the one and only miss monique samuels binder queen um the cast consists of monique and her husband chris Raina and jamie taylor and ashley and dj quicksilver and we'll start to go through them as they start to introduce like i said the show opens up with monique She's talking about everything that she does from Not Lazy Moms podcast. She's also a uh, radio host for a morning show. Um, I think it's called um, Good Morning DC or something like that. But it's on WPGC 95.5. I actually listened to it um, going into work. So it's a really, really good show. Um, Very, very, very good show. So hopefully hopefully they'll last long. Because I know with these radio stations, they are quick to take something off the air right when it's starting to click because of whatever reason. So hopefully they'll get the last... Um, have some good time to last long. So she talks about how, you know, she's done all these things, but we really know her from, of course, Real Housewives of Potomac. And um, I didn't really get into Potomac until like the fourth or fifth season, but I will say I was very mad at the way they they portrayed her. And I was also very upset that she had left the show because I thought she was really, really, really good for the show. But I'm very happy that Monique is back on TV. She talks about how she had reality show um, PTSD. And like I said, she pretty much talks, you know, she has that because of how they treated her over at Bravo and and things like that. And how they portrayed her after that incident that she had with on that other show, as she says. Um, She originally turned the show. She originally turned Love and Marriage DC down. She just didn't want to do it. So, but she thought about it and she came back and you can really tell that the show is going to be centered around her and Chris, which rightfully so this first season, because they are the main, they they are the most well-known couple out of the entire cast. Yes, we know Quicksilver and some people know um, Jamie uh, Taylor or Tyler, however you say his last name, but we all know Monique and Chris Samuels. Um, So she pulls up at her Bentley, you know what I'm saying? Doing what she do. She pulls up in her Bentley, big boss, coin down. Um, this little check, this little check ain't doing nothing in my bank account. <laughs> She's at her event, which is um not lazy, not not lazy for mom's pop-up. Next, we are introduced to Ashley Silver, who is the wife of DJ Quicksilver. She says she's a nice, the nicest bitch you'll ever meet. She's also at Monique's pop-up shop. Um, we know that quick. Well, I know, and a lot of people who are in this area, I want to say maybe not. I'm not even gonna say this area. I want to say like the East Coast. No, Quicksilver. He used to DJ for Little Mo for Jay Z. Um, he does huge parties. He's worked with everybody from Janet and the Janet Jackson, I should say. He has a syndicated radio show. He had a radio show a couple years ago, and. Some of you remember, may remember when he got his ass up on that radio and tried to embarrass his co-worker and his wife was not feeling it and she called into the radio station and she pretty much shut shit down. Um, he was being messy and they took him off the radio, So he's but he's back now. So, But yeah, um, I'm sure that interview, that, that clip or something is like that somewhere online. If I find it, maybe I'll clip it into the, into the bio. But um, so anyway, so we she pops, she goes to Monique's um, pop up. They both have something in common because they both have podcasts about being a mom, 
and um, they've known each other for a couple years now. The next lady up is Rainer Taylor. She has three kids. She's an entrepreneur. She's a serial entrepreneur. Um, and they don't really tell us much about her at first, uh, yet. But Monique pretty much is like, you know, she slid into her DMs because she actually wanted her to be on Real Housewives of Potomac. But I guess whatever the issue was, it didn't work out. So now they're on this show together. But she, Monique pretty much slid into her DMs and they've been friends for some years now. And we also learned that she's been married for 26 years to her husband. And also um, Quicksilver and, and Ashley have been married for 13 years. And Monique and Chris have been married for 10 years. So next up, baby, is this lady named Winter Williams. She is one of Monique's friends. The side of her head is shaved off. I don't know what's going on with that. But Raina point out, whatever you see somebody with a shaved head or something, they going through it. And baby, <laughs> Miss Mamas is going through it. She's going through it. So she gets on the microphone at this pop-up event. And I'm, I think we probably, what, maybe less than 15 minutes into the show. And she's like, I want to be main cast member next year. So let me go ahead and hit y'all with my tea. So pretty much her tea is she is a mother of four. Her ex-husband and Chris used to play on the same team, which is the Washington Redskins, all now known as the Washington Commanders. And um, <laughs> she was married for 15 years. She walked in on her spouse, baby, getting it in with the nanny, getting it in, getting down. Baby, the nanny, that wasn't the only thing the nanny was cleaning, okay? <laughs> baby, that nanny was cleaning that dick. Um, <laughs> sorry, let me compose myself. And then, to top it off, baby, she learns that the nanny then had two of this man's kids. So she had to go and let that go. She had to go and let that go. She had to go on and let that go. We'll get more into that as the show goes on. So the ladies are looking at her like, well, they looking at each other side eyed like she get her ass up here at this pop up and just start telling us her. Oh, OK, it's nice to meet you also, too, ma'am. Yeah, we're not getting ready to give you my business like that, but you can go ahead and give us all your tea. But you ain't about to get mine yet. So, um. Uh, Ashley lets us know that her and Quick are they're married, but they don't have any married friends. And the lady, you know, which I find very interesting. So I'm sure that'll play out throughout the season. They have a nice little fun scene because um Arena's talking about she's having a, a 26 year a 26 year anniversary party and she doesn't know what to get the man that has everything. So Ashley's like, you know, girl, shake that ass in front of him, shake that ass. And, you know, she's like, well, girl, I've been doing that for 26 years. And she's like, yeah, but you got to do it a certain way. You got to do it a certain way. And she, you know, it's a fun scene and things like that. And she's like, it's not the only thing they like in the morning. So, you know, they always laughing and having a good time. So it's really, really good, um, fun scene. We move on to Chris and we learn a little bit more about Chris, which I'm sure we knew from Potomac. But, you know, they, for people who don't know them, they hit that to re, redo this whole thing. So Chris played for the NFL for 10 years. He ended up getting a neck injury, so he, he had to leave. But he's a six-time pro baller. He was a um, team coach for a couple, you know, a couple times. And we are learning that, yes, they are madly in love. And he does all the things he needs to do as a man and this and that. But they are their emotional side is, is, is falling. They're, they're not connecting the way that they need to. And, you know... That's not that's not a surprise because when you're in these long relationships, things like that happen. Like I always say, we're human. You know, some people are meant to be together forever and they can figure it out. And some people not to be and are not to be um, meant to be together forever. So, you know, it's interesting that they are having these problems. And I know Monique was saying when she was on the podcast that they always seem to have these issues and then get another year, which is when they started filming. So, you know, like I said, that's interesting, but it's nothing. It's nothing major. It's nothing shocking. People go through shit. So they're having an emotional thing right now. That one person is feeling one way and the other person is feeling one, you know, one way. So again, we'll see how that plays out throughout the season. Next, we are at Arena. I think I'm saying, I hope I'm saying this lady name right, but we'll call her Arena and Jamie. We're at their house, which is a nice house. Mm, nothing special. Nothing, ain't nothing special. But it's a nice house. Um, her mom's lives, her mom lives with them. Her mom has moved in with them about five years ago. So mom lives there for five years now. Um, 
She ain't tell us why, but uh, I don't know if I want to live my mama for five years. Um, we learned that her son Jason is a visually impaired, and the mom is always helping out, which I guess maybe that's the reason she moved there. Um, I'll save my judgment throughout the season. Uh, let me see what else. Um, we meet Jamie Taylor. He's he, he his company is JJ Entertainment. He's a big party planner. He done parties all over. We learned that little Jamie and um, which is their son. And Big Jamie, I'm gonna have to figure out something. We gonna, I'm gonna have to figure out another name. We okay, so Big Jamie gonna be JT and Lil Jamie gonna be Lil Jamie. So Lil Jamie, <laughs> so Lil Jamie and JT are father and son. So Little Jamie and and JT are they have a strained relationship. They have not spoken in about five or six months. And um as the show goes on, we start to learn why I guess we kind of learn why but you know arena's like you know i invited all the kids to the party and he's like well hopefully you know little jamie will show up i'll be surprised if he does i'll pretty much see it when i see it so this this scene they didn't tell us why they were really beefing but you know we start to learn throughout the show why they are beefing Next, we are inside the house of the Silvers, Ashley and DJ Quicksilver. And if you follow them on Instagram, you probably already seen their house. Um, Child of Asses live up down Waldorf somewhere. Um, I'm a, I'm a, let me just be nice. Um, they have two kids. They have a boy and a girl. The girl is nine. The boy is 14. I forgot their names. Like I said earlier, DJ, he's a huge DJ. Um, he has a syndicated radio show. He's been he's been on tours. He's produced records. He also has a DJ in school out in D.C. And, um, yeah, they've been married for almost 13 years. Ashley says she doesn't have enough time to complete her book and to do the things that she's trying to do because she pretty much is like, you know, look, like I'm taking care of the kids. I'm shopping for the kids. I'm helping the kids with their homework. I'm picking the kids up. I'm taking the kids to school. And she's pretty much saying like, you don't help out enough. And he, his thing is like, you know, the career that I have doesn't care that I have a wife or, or kids. And DJ Quicksilver is a big DJ, but I think for him, he wants to be on the levels of the DJ Callies and, um, you know, the DJs that that you see out in Vegas that's getting 13 million a set. You know, he's trying to be like that. And I get it. I'm not mad at it, at him for that at all. So it's, 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 she thinks they're good. She thinks that he needs to slow, he needs to slow down with working. But his whole thing is like, you know, I work, I provide, I love what I do. And I think, well, not, I think, I know when you love what you do, it's not work. People say that all the time, but it's not work. When you love what you do, it's not work. You want to have fun. You want to have a good time. And then, you know, think about it. He's in the entertainment industry. All it's going to take is that one phone call that's going to make or break him. And I'm not making excuses for him, but, you know, he gets that call. It's like, yo, we want you to come on tour with, with whoever. Okay, I'm there. Or, no, I can't make it. Then people are petty they might be like well don't hit up him because you know he he can't come out on tour with, with so-and-so so you just never know so i get his side and i get her side but you know she's just like she wants help she wants him she wants his help she wants him to do more and his whole thing was like you know i i hear you i acknowledge you and I, i'm going to do better so we'll see um how he does with that we'll see if he slows down or not but she wants help and she wants to be able to do the things that she wants to do. And she's pretty much like, you know, don't act like I don't contribute to the household. I even had to drop out of school. Now, she didn't say what she was going to school for um, or anything like that. But she's pretty much like, you know, I don't want to be stuck in his shadow. Um, I'm not dropping out of school for nobody. I'm sorry. Unless you unless you a multi-millionaire and I'm living in the lap of luxury and not down Waldorf. I mean the lap of luxury. I'm not dropping out of school. We're gonna have to figure this out. 
but you know they live a nice life but yeah i don't know about that dropping out of school um but you know this is the first episode so i'm going to save my judgment (laughs) for the rest of the season because i yeah you know i'm not the biggest fans of the silvers anyway um you know i could really do nothing on tv we move on to little Jamie, and he's in him. He's with his mom, and they are at the car dealership, and he's trying to get a car. And she's pretty much like, you know, I'm not paying for anything. We never learned if he got the car or not. I guess we'll see throughout this. I, I don't know. But little Jamie's 25 years old. They're at the car dealership. She's like, I'm not, you know, helping you get the car. Let's go see. What, let's see what you want. And they start talking about the relationship with his father and that's when we learned that they haven't talked about five or six months and she said you know his dad should be taking him but he's scared of his dad she, he's scared to make the phone call and she's pretty much like you know you need to be more responsible you need to get yourself together every time you leave the house we don't know what's going to happen we don't we don't know you know if you're going to come back i pray now here now here's where i was with her and then i was like um where the tears at so <laughs> i was with her when she was pretty much like you know as a black man in this world you're doing the wrong thing anything can happen to you i feel like as a black man in this world you could be doing the right thing and anything can happen to you. We have it difficult, as we all know. We're not getting ready to go down that road, but we just have it difficult. So, you know, I get what she was saying. You know, I don't want the police come knocking on my door saying something has happened to you and things like that. And she starts to get emotional. And one thing that kills me about reality TV, or just, yeah, I'm going to say reality TV. I'm not, how can I say this? I get it that people are emotional and things like that, but I also was like, sis, you trying to make the tears come out, but they not coming. He was he was more emotional than she was because he light skinned, so his nose was turning red and all that kind of his eyes were getting puffy and everything. So he was getting emotional. She was just like, you know, I just want and I just want and I just want to make sure that you come home today, and I just wanna. I was like, ain't no tears coming out of her eyes, but this is a powerful scene, so I'm going to be nice. Um, Yeah, so, but again, I understand what she's saying. Like, you know, you got to come home. Like, you you got to you gotta get yourself together. You're 25 years old. You got to get yourself together, and you got to do the right thing. So, I get it. It's the night of the party, and we learned that baby went and got a second husband. <laughs> baby. Went to the got her ass another husband. So she done left the one that was fucking the nanny. He was down there doing his Arnold Schwarzenegger thing. And went to the moved on and got her a new man. But child, she ain't, t- she ain't seen this man in six months. She said he got a text. She got a text message. They was coming up on their one year anniversary. And the text message was like, I'm going to my mama house. And Monique was like, well, ain't he almost 60? <laughs> So, um, uh, got a, yeah. <laughs> and he almost 60, he got a message and she's like, you know, it, 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 it is what it is. And Monique was like, well, I'm glad you got the strength to say it ain't working or blah, blah, blah. But this get ready to probably be the most interesting. Let me tell y'all something. Based off of what Winter was bringing the first 15 minutes of the show, I think the show going to be based off of Winter and Monique. I think the other girls are going to play the to play the back scene. I think they're going to have their little drama and their stories. But baby, I think this goddamn show about to Monique went to like you're not going to make me a main cast member. Oh, okay, you will next season. Oh, you definitely going to make me a main cast cast member next season, and I'm going to be at the reunion. So we're going to see how that play out. Um, the uh, Ashley arrives and um, they sit down. And they start talking about you know the whole. He works too much and provide for the family and things like that. So, like I said, they'll that'll play out more throughout the season. Arena and Jamie arrive. They look great um, for their 26th anniversary. 
But child, as soon as they sit down, Monique was like, okay, Q and A. And I know she was joking. She was kind of well, her ass was serious, but she tried to make it seem like she was joking. But the but Arena but Jane was like, we ain't come here. We ain't no damn merge counselor. We ain't come here for that. Y'all hear how I said that? Let me tell y'all something. Hold me before I finish. I know y'all hear the accent that we we got in these that we got in the DMV. We have a very thick accent. Our M's are thick. Sometimes we say two, and we like two. Um, sometimes they say dog. What they say, Doug, Murray, um, Merlin. You know, so that's the DMV. That's the DMV for me. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> um, what was I saying? Um, I lost my train of thought. Oh, they sat down and pretty much are trying to have a Q and A because they're trying to figure out how they been together for twenty six years. And I just felt like I get it. You know, you want the advice, but something on their calendar send them an invite send them a text message let's get up not at they party and again they were joking they weren't trying to ambush them but child monique had some serious because her and chris going through some shit and she's like i'm gonna fuck this party i want to know how to help how you will help me get through with this nigga over here um but so they they move on and then little jamie comes upstairs he comes in and enters himself and he's with some lady i don't know if it was his girl or not but he was somebody his dad looked shocked that he even showed up and little Jamie walks over to JT and he's pretty much like, you know, pulls his dad to the side. He's like, he's taking ownership of his fuck ups. You know, he's like, I messed up. You know, I got to do better. I can't let the weed control me. I hanging out with the wrong people. So, you know, he's really just trying to like pour it out. Which again, I always find stuff like this weird at a party. The music playing loud and we try to have a serious conversation. I get it though. I get it. It's for the cameras. You know, it's a reality show. Sometimes that's the only time you can see a that's the only time you see a person. But JT, Big Jamie, he was just like, you go this way or you go that way. You gotta make the choice. You gonna be dead or alive. I'm like, what? Then he like, you know, I always tell it like it is. I know I'm hard on you. I tell it like it is. I'm like, but you're not saying nothing. Anyway, um, but for a person who lost their father, I would give anything to have one of those conversations, whether my dad was sitting there like Jamie's dad was or not. So I get it. You know, he wants his son to do better. He loves his son. Our parents always want us to do better than they've done. And I'm sure it'd be the same when you start, when we all start having kids or already have kids, you want your kids to do better. So I get it. Um, so he was like, you know, I'm glad you came to the party. I love you. Um, you don't know how much this means to me and your mom. So, so you know, it ended in a nice way. And we're on to the next day. And it's pretty much Chris and Chris and Monique are talking about the night before and how Jamie and um and and um Arena are was very guarded. It was just like, yeah, we've been through stuff. And they're like, well, what y'all been through? But they ain't really say what they've been through. But again, why are we having this conversation at a party? Like, no, let's have this conversation somewhere else and I'll get back to y'all. But yeah, so they just tried to much trying to get some advice about their current situations. We learned that Chris is seeing a, a life coach and the life coach had gotten to a point where he had to pretty much bring Monique in because he wasn't sharing much. And then they started to get to an argument because Chris is supposed to present this list about his like just about like his passions and things like this and monique was like you know i hear your apologies but i'm tired of you know just apologizing and sweeping it sweeping it under the rug i want more i'm trying to get you to open up more it's been 10 years and i know the pattern i know what triggers me and i just don't want to keep hearing it so she's pretty much not buying it and the scene goes off and like i said this is a pretty good episode um nothing like out, outside of winter ass <laughs> Child outside of winter, ain't really much else happened. Um, but yeah, I'm interested and I'm excited to see this show. Like I said, Monique is my girl. Um, and I really, really am happy for her. And we'll see how everybody else plays out. We'll see. I'm sure everybody will have their favorites and things like that. And yeah, that's that. That was Love and Marriage DC. Welcome to the Chocolate City. The home of go-go. Where the president live at? Where the ballers stay? <laughs> but 
But um, yeah, so I'll see y'all next week for Love and Marriage DC. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Tell me your thoughts. And do y'all think this is going to be a good season or not? Like I told y'all, I think winter about to winter about to set the shit off. Winter is about to winter is coming, honey. Winter is coming, and I will talk to you all later because winter is coming.